Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to see you all with us tonight for our Happy Wednesday service. I have been looking forward to this for several months now. I, this is a little strange to say, but I actually look forward to Lent. Um, it's a time of self-examination and repentance and sacrifice and some fasting. Um, and so tonight we're going to begin our Lenten journey with an Ash Wednesday service. Will you please stand with me and take out your bulletins for our call to worship. Nick and I will read in the light print. If you would please read the dark print. Even now, return to me, says God. Let the sirens in the streets rage. Let the trumpet from the church house blow. Let those consumed with darkness, gloomy from bad fortunes, know that. Even now, God says, return to me. Let the abused, abusing hear, the defiant and disobedient revere. Let the sinner and the scornful draw near. Return from your ignorance. Return from your injustice. Return from your apathy, return from your agony. Even now, God says, return to me. Return from your selfishness. Return from your greed. Return from your neglect. Return out of your need. Even now, God says, return to me. Return to me with a clean heart. 
Return to me with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Return to me, God says, for I am gracious and merciful. I am slow to anger and full of steadfast love. Return to me, God says, for I am your God. Will you please remain standing for our first hymn? You'll want to take out your hymn books tonight. We are old-fashioned tonight. So take out your hymn books and turn to hymn number 354, I Surrender All. First one out of 
the Old Testament in the prophet Joel, chapter 1. I believe the page numbers are in your bulletin. Is that correct? And I'm actually reading out of the NRSB tonight, so we're all on the same page. Joel chapter 1, verse 14. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. And then in chapter 2, Verses 12 and 13. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Second scripture reading, it comes out of the book of 2 Kings, chapter 23. This is out of the reign of Josiah. And I'm actually reading these tonight. There's a lot of names in here, and I didn't want to throw Doug or anyone else under the bus tonight. <laughs> Who's was John tonight. I didn't want to throw that. We've got some names to read. So 2 Kings, chapter 23, reading from verses 1 through verse 14. Then the king directed that all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem should be gathered to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the people of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. Remember that sentence right there. The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord, keeping his commandments, his decrees, and his statutes with all his heart, with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in the book and all the people joined in the covenant. Then the king commanded the priest Hilkiah, the, the priest of the second order and the guardians of the threshold to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels made for Baal. You heard that. Where are they being brought out of? The temple of the Lord. For Asherah and all the hosts of heaven, he burned them outside of Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. He deposed the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to make offerings in the high places in the cities of Judah and around Jerusalem. Those who made offerings to Baal, to the sun, the moon, the constellations, and all the hosts of heaven. He brought out the image of Asherah from the house of the Lord. Outside Jerusalem to the Wadi Kidron. Burned it at the Wadi Kidron beat it to dust, and threw the dust of it upon the graves of common people. He broke down the houses of the male temple prostitutes that were in the house of the Lord, where the women did weaving for Asher. This is the temple, mind you, where these things are happening. He brought all the priests out of the towns of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had made offerings from Geba to Beersheba. He broke down the high places of the gates that were at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on the left at the gate of the city. The priests of the high places, of the high places, however, did not come up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but ate unleavened bread among their kindred. He defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of Ben Hanan, so that no one would so that no one would make a son or daughter pass through the fire as an offering to Moab. Human sacrifice. He removed the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun at the entrance of the house of the Lord by the chamber of the eunuch Nathan Melech, which was in the precincts. Then he burned the chariots of the sun with fire. The altars on the roof of the upper chambers of Ahaz 
which the kings of Judah had made and the altar that Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, he pulled down from there and broke into pieces and threw the rubble into the wadi Kibbeh. The king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem to the south of the Mount of Destruction, which King Solomon of Israel had built for Astarte, the abomination of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. He broke the pillars in pieces, cut down the sacred poles, and covered the sites with human bones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 So this is a really interesting passage of scripture, and as Nick and I were talking today, there was, some of you know, I, some of you are aware, I had to make a surprise journey to um, Harrisonburg today, because I have a, a daughter who has the flu. So I drove to Harrisonburg and back, all the way down to Lord and back up here. Still made it back in time. This is why we use Waze so that we know where the police might be sitting, so we can just <laughs> slow down to the This is one of the reasons why we have lit, so the pastor can also do some repenting tonight for his fast driving. But it's an interesting passage, because Nick asks me, he's like, what does this have to do with Lent? I'm not connecting this at all. I said, there's a, there's a method behind my madness, and I have plenty of madness, I assure you. But there's a method behind my madness. So Josiah, who this passage is about, was very young. He is also recognized as the very last good king of either Israel or Judah. The last one who was faithful. He's made king at age 8, and by the time he's at age 26, he has decided that the temple has fallen into complete disrepair. It's a mess, and so he's collected money from all the people, and he gives it to the workers who go in there, and they're going to begin to restore the temple. And he's aware of all the things that are in the temple, but he's not aware that they're wrong. And this is an important part for you to remember. He's not aware that the Asherah poles and the, the little things that go to Baal are wrong. He has sought to do what is right, but he doesn't know any better. So in 26, he makes this decree that the temple be repaired, and the sum is given to the workers, and the workers are in there, and the chief priest is in there with them, Hilkiah, and Hilkiah comes across a book. And he opens it, and he reads it. And he comes back, and Josiah's secretary, the man by the name of Shaphan, and he gives it, says, Shaphan, I found something. I found something. And he hands the book to Shaphan, the king's secretary, who takes it to the king, and he sends a message, and he says, tell the king, we have found the law. We have found the law. They knew about the law. They, they knew about the law, but they had not been following it. It's not been read to them. It's just kind of an idea. You know, don't you, that we have a United States Constitution. But if I ask you for the details of that Constitution, few of you are going to be able to give me those details. Some of you are who are interested in that sort of thing. Great. But most of you, I dare say, can't give me any details of what's in the Constitution beyond uh, freedom of speech. Something like that. So they're aware that there's a law, and there's just there's no awareness of what this is all about. Because there had been a slow slide away from following the law for generations. Very few people have been actually following what the law says. The law had been ignored throughout the reign of all the kings, all the way through the Babylonian captivity. We're talking about hundreds of years. No one ever reading from the law. So Shaphan brings it to Josiah, and he reads the law to him. Josiah hears it read to him for the first time. Josiah is stunned 
and horrified by what he hears. Let me read you the passage. This comes out of the previous chapter, chapter 22, verse 11. Listen to this. The priest Hilkiah has given me a book shape and then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. He is stunned by what he is hearing because he realizes, oh, oh no, we have not been living according to this. And the law carries with it blessings and cursings, if you read from Deuteronomy. It carries punishments. It carries consequences if the people of Israel don't follow the law. And now Josiah hundreds of years later, is reading this and is thinking, we are in trouble. So he doesn't stop there. He sends his servants, including his secretary, Shaphan, and the high priest, Hilkiah, to go and inquire of the Lord. We, we've discovered we've been doing wrong. Go and inquire of the Lord. Listen to this. This is verse 13 from chapter 22. The king serves and he says to them, Go inquire of the Lord for me, for all the people, and for all of Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our ancestors did not obey the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. He had never written this. I mean, read it. He's never read this. He has no idea. And now he's been, now he's realizing it's, it's like showing up for school and you've got a massive final exam that's going to determine the course of your life and it is handed to you and you see it for the first time. Imagine the horror that you have. So the priest, Hilkiah, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to the prophetess Hulda, the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, son of Herod's, keeper of the wardrobe. She resided in Jerusalem in the second quarter where they consulted her. Listen to this. She declared to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me, to Josiah, thus says the Lord, I will indeed bring disaster on this place and its inhabitants. All the words of the book that the king of Judah has read. Because they have abandoned me, they have made offerings to other gods, so that they have provoked me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be kindled against this place, and it will not be quenched. But, as to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was penitent, and you humbled yourself before the Lord, when you heard how I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and because you have torn your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, says the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes shall not see all the disaster that I will bring on this place. They took the message back to the king. Did you hear what she said? Because what the original account says is he tore his clothes. But then we learn something new, don't we? He didn't just tear his robes. He weeps. He weeps at what he heard. He is in agony of soul. He is so upset and repentant and just beside himself with grief over what has become of the people. And hearing the words of the law, Josiah has discovered that the people have not been living obediently to God. And again, he didn't even know until the light was shined. Josiah calls a solemn assembly and gathers the people to the temple. He reads the law to them and they commit to following God. 
but it doesn't even stop there. Because it's the passage that I read to you. They look out across the land. They see idols and foreign gods everywhere. And all these other extra places of worship. And so what does he do? He sets out. He and his people and his soldiers. And they remove everything that has defiled the people. He cleanses the temple. And he cleanses the land. And then something really remarkable happens. Chapter 23, verse 21. The king commanded all the people, keep the Passover to the Lord your God as prescribed in this book of the covenant. The Passover. We've read the Passover, right? You know what the Passover is. It's an exodus. The Passover is instituted when they march out of the land of Egypt. Jesus celebrates the Passover meal with his disciples on the night he was betrayed. Everybody knows about the Passover. Or did they? The king commanded all the people, keep the Passover to the Lord your God as prescribed in this book. No such Passover had been kept since the days of the judges who judged Israel, even during all the days of the kings of Israel. Hundreds of years, generations have gone by since the last Passover. They've never done it. So, question. Why are we talking about the acts of Josiah on this evening? Let's take stock of our land as they took stock of theirs. It is an understatement to say that this church has endured several years of hardship. You all know this church has been through fire. It culminated in a church split last year. For nearly a year, this church turned its eyes inward. With all the dissensions, with all the divisions, its eyes were turned inward, and the light of the kingdom was hidden under a bushel. We have divisions. We have broken friendships. Consider the state of our country. We are as divided as we have ever been. And people can barely stand to be around with those they disagree with. Disagreement seems to be words of war now. Josiah and his people look out and they see all the things that are defiling the land. And we look out and see all the things that have defiled us and have made us in a similar state. So this evening... Like Josiah, like the words of Joel, I'm calling a solemn assembly for us. Tonight I want us to come together and say, Lord, examine our hearts. Examine our hearts, O Lord. And even as we're asking the Lord to examine our hearts, we ourselves must examine our hearts. For sure, that is the reason of Ash Wednesday. Just as they stood together with Josiah, let us stand together and call upon God to heal our church, to heal our country. Let us call on God that he would remind us to love one another regardless of agreement or disagreement. Let this be a day where we come together and ask God to forgive us and cleanse us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before Easter celebration there should be 40 day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to the participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on the Holy Scriptures, to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow our heads before our Creator and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and our penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Amen. So we will have two lines tonight. If you would like to have ashes imposed, I will be on this side. Nick will be on that side. You can have the ashes down on your forehead, which is traditional, or we can do it on the back of your hand, whichever is your choice. There is no obligation to have ashes if you don't want them. We simply offer them. Will you come?
please take your bullets and out for our confession and pardon. I'll read the light from print. Please follow along in the dark. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your love and mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. And you know, Lord, I was born in your iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, a God you will not despise. May the Almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Will you please stand and join us for the singing of our closing hymn in your hymn books. Hymn number 382, Have Thine Own Way, Lord.
forth with Lent for the next several weeks, may we pray the Lenten prayer found in our hymnal on page 268 as our benediction prayer. O God, our deliverer, you led your people of old through the wilderness and brought them to your promised land. Guide now the people of your church, that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go forth in peace and love. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.